of Stewart Films. Um, I originally was in the real estate business, owned my own real estate management company. Um, and then a friend came to me and gave me a script, which, and I was reading it, and I was cracking up the whole time. I was like, wow, this is so funny. So I called him and I said, what, what is it that you need? You know, this is really great. And he said, I need everything. I have the script and I wrote it and I want to be a director. And I've been acting. He was on Little Miss Sunshine and a whole bunch of other projects. He said, but I'm really ready to direct, but nobody believes in me. So nobody will help me. So I said, okay, well, let me make some calls and see, you know, what I can do. I'll get back to you in a week. I called them the next day because that night I went home and I called my friends and I said, look, I want to make a movie. They're like, you're crazy. We got a cast together and, um, you know, I spent way too much money because I didn't have all the right contacts in terms of crew and stuff. Um, but what happened is the unexpected, right? We, the film did really well. We won at the LA Film Festival. We won at the New York International Film Festival. Everybody, Everybody loved, loved it. it. We did a screening, 180 people. Wow. It, it was a hit. Okay, so there started. That's when I got the itch. I, I sort of became the person who can merge the, the have-nots with the have, right? And so I'm able to see talent and give them a platform and an opportunity to do what they love. I had some cash from, from the real estate business, and I said, you know, I'm really going to get involved in the independent filmmaking community and really try to understand um, what they need, because what I realized most importantly was that they don't have access or representation. I'm able to see talent and give them a platform and an opportunity to do what they love. Um, most of the people I've worked with you probably have never heard of until recently. Right. <laughs> um, so the, and there's something about that, you know, about just knowing that people have talent and mm -hmm. the only reason that they're not successful is because they haven't been able to get in front of the right people or, you know, a matter of funding. And so I'm able to uh, take people who have a dream and who have talent and put them in the right place. We definitely went the traditional route. Okay. Um, but the but the wall that a lot of African American shows and and programming run into um, is that the funding is limited. That's just the reality. There there's only a certain amount of money that's allocated. Period. period. Right. And then there's a small portion of that money that's allocated for African American projects. Um, they find them to be extremely risky. Because I think they still don't understand that, that there's a market beyond the sneakers and the cars and all that other stuff, right? And so if they can't attract those advertisers, the Lexus, mm -hmm. right, the, the sneakers, um, you, know, you know, the things, things that are traditionally known to be black products okay. or consumed mostly by African Americans, um, and the advertisers are not going to come, then they're not going to do it. Whereas online, you can put it on YouTube, develop an audience, and you're not waiting for approval from one person who holds your fate in their hands. What the internet has done is allowed us um, an opportunity to reach the entire world on our own terms. The thing is, you have to build the audience yourself, okay. one person at a time. 
um, we went on various platforms that we knew, uh, hip hop press, that we knew had our audience. And we then asked them to embed our player into their websites. Okay. so that we could attract those people. So when you went there to read about hip hop, you would see our show in the corner playing. Okay. Um, um, we also developed a lot of relationships with bloggers who had followings that were our audience. And we said, look, um, would you be willing to put or do a little story about our show? Um, and in return, we would promote your page as well. Um, I think part of it is understanding what you bring to the table and whatever that is, being able to give it freely. One of the things that we're looking at doing um, end of this year, beginning of next year, is starting a full production company that's going to specialize on web series. So what that will allow me to do is to take all, because who's making web series? Actors. You right. know why? Because they want to be seen, That's especially right. African-American, and right. they can't get the roles. So you know what they're doing? They're like, oh, I can shoot, you know, five, five minute shows of myself being the lead, right? That may not necessarily work if they don't have a quality show, because who's going to watch it? We get into this thing where we have to compete. You know, I don't have to have another uh, Tyler Perry type film mm -hmm. when I could just create something that's completely different, but that speaks to the same audience. Because at the end of the day, this business is about the audience, knowing who they are, how to get to them, how to keep them, right? And then the final thought on that is how do you monetize from writing them something that they want? Because giving them some wants doesn't always have money. The business aspect is important. We started 12 Steps um, from the ground up. And um, we were fortunate to be on cable for a little while. Okay. Um, but, but one of the things, that show has 20, a little bit over 20 episodes, and 80% of it has been funded by sponsors. Wow. And so what, what I did was I provided advertising opportunities for the little people, for the mama and papa who has an online business and can't afford thousands of dollars for marketing. And then we and took, then their, we product took their product and we wrote it into the, the script, script of the, the show, show so it couldn't be stripped if it ever got picked up. And this was especially important for online blog radio stations, dating services. Um, you know, one of our big uh, sponsors was Reflect Aware with dog leashes that glow in the dark. And we wrote that into the script and it was this whole scene um, and it was tastefully done because Tony Clomax is an amazing writer. We're actually in talks now for 12 Steps. I mean, one of the reasons we took 12 Steps off of cable was because I found ways to monetize it online. So if I can reach more people than you mm. and I can make money, because I think we go very traditional and we think I have a show, it's gotta be on ABC or NBC or Fox, right? Right. But if, but if, but those numbers are horrendous. I was on a panel with the International Television Festival last year, and I was, I was, I almost passed out when I heard the numbers. They hear about 500 pitches a year, right? 500. Okay. Of those 500, maybe, maybe they, they select, select 50. 50. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Of those 50, five maybe get to the final round. Okay. And of those, and five, of those five, two, two get on the get network. On the Wow. And out of those two, maybe one survives. Wow. So if all your eggs are in that basket mm -hmm. and you're African American, forget it. Why would you do that to yourself? Wow. When you can just create a new way on your own terms 
And that's, that's sort of what I preach to people. It's like, so, so we can't be on ABC, but who wants to be on ABC? You know, today the conversation is different, right? Because today um, I'm going somewhere saying I have 1.4 million people watching this show. Wow. And 80% of the show was paid by somebody who wanted to advertise. So if that is the case, and, and I have to tell you, we've been sort of holding back on a lot of things, especially with 12 steps, because now that we have been able to monetize the show, because remember, every time somebody watches it, we get paid, mm -hmm. right? Why would we hand it over to somebody who may chop it up and change it? Right. And change our cast. Wow. So I don't have to deal with that. So 12 steps may never actually get on a network. I mean, we're looking at it, the, the, we're either looking at doing a season two online or doing a feature because we're going to leave the last two episodes sort of on a, on a hanger, okay. the last two that are coming. Um, but, you know, I'm not even concerned about having a conversation with a network because I, if I can make money and do it my way, uh, you know, it doesn't make it doesn't sense. Make sense.